So, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can recreate any image in Blender to create a realistic environment like this. Creating such a large environment can be very hard and overwhelming. And if you are not careful, you can easily spend weeks working on it, only for it to look awful in the end. I struggled with this for years, never finishing a project of that scale. So if you are in a similar position, by the end of this video, you will know how to fix that and how to finally finish your environments. So let's quickly break down the entire process. First, you are going to learn to take any image, be it a screenshot from a game or movie, concept art or real photo, into Blender, where you can easily block out your whole scene. Next, you are going to learn how you can model all the details without having years of experience in Blender. Then, we are going to texture our scene, all inside of Blender, and after that we are going to light it in a realistic and simple way. Lastly, we are going to add trees, bushes and grass to fill up our scene and really make it look believable. I've divided this video into different chapters where you will learn the main steps for creating such a scene yourself. So by the end of this video, you will be ready to tackle your own projects. If that still isn't enough and you want to break down this scene in even more detail, really get a full view behind the curtains, then you can head over to Patreon where you can download the full project and play with it yourself. There you can also get all my other project files to truly master Blender. So go get a cup of coffee or tea and let's jump into chapter number one, which is blocking. First, you need to download the free program FSpy. FSpy makes it easy to figure out all the important camera details, which is essential for recreating any image in 3D. To do this, simply align the guidelines with the perspective of your image. Look for anything square or straight that defines the structure of the scene. All you really need are two straight lines for two different axes. And FSpy should be able to calculate the camera settings. You can also move the reference box around to check if the perspective matches correctly. If you are working with a real photograph, keep in mind that the results might not be perfect. Strong lens distortions or a lack of perfectly straight perpendicular lines can sometimes make it harder to get an accurate match. With that said, we can save our project and head over to Blender. With the FSpy add-on installed, you can now easily import your FSpy projects into Blender, which will set up a camera with the correct focal length and background image. Now, from inside your camera, you can start blocking out your scene. Important here is to keep it very simple. Just block out your main shapes and make sure the size and scale is correct. Very helpful is to import some human scale reference which will help you figure out how far away objects are by comparing the size of the human to the buildings or objects. Now that we have our scene blocked out, it's time to dive into modeling. This is where a lot of people get stuck, especially if they feel they don't have enough of experience in Blender's modeling tools. If you are looking to improve your skills, whether as a beginner or an advanced artist, Skillshare, today's sponsor, is a great place to learn. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. It's packed with thousands of classes taught by experts, so no matter your level, beginner or advanced, you will find something that fits your needs. You can explore topics like 3D modeling, animation, sculpting or freelancing. But Skillshare isn't just for 3D artists. There are also great classes on productivity, illustration and so much more. I personally have been trying to stay more focused during my work days as I explained in my previous video. And Skillshare has been super helpful in that. 
I took a class on Ali Abdal on organizing my day and it really gave me some great practical tips to avoid distractions and get more done. With Skillshare you don't just watch, but you get to put what you learn into practice right away. And you can even share your projects with other members for feedback. So the first 500 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So why not give it a try today? And now let's jump back into the tutorial with chapter 2, which is modeling. At this stage we are going to add all the nice details into our scene that is really going to give it some depth and character. But if you are not careful, you can easily spend weeks on the steps, which often means you are running out of motivation and not finishing the project. So in our case we set up our camera and blocked out the scene. So we know what is in our field of view and we know how close each object is to the camera. Now we can add details based on that. So there's no reason to model stuff that is outside of the frame or behind buildings or any other objects. With being able to move freely inside our 3D software comes the downside that we can easily hyper focus on one object specifically while forgetting about the rest of the environment. So try to think of it as a traditional artist painting a picture. They have this one window they can draw from, this one resolution. So for stuff in the background, try to not spend as much time as for stuff in the foreground. Try to stay inside of the camera and model from there. This will help you focus on stuff that really matters. Using the basic modeling tools like extrusion, insert, adding loop cuts and beveling will get you most of the way. There is no reason to do some fancy geometry nodes setup or elaborate modifier stacks. Just model what you see and what you want to add the easiest way possible. Also we don't really care about topology as long as it's light and does not slow down our scene too much. So even a beginner artist should be up to the task. Start with the biggest shapes and work your way down to the smaller details. So with everything modeled we can jump into the next chapter which is texturing. Similar to modeling, texturing is a stage where you can really spend a lot of time painting all the smallest surface details. You might have even heard of the program called Substance Painter which is widely used in games and movies. But we don't have the time to spend weeks on texturing. We really want to be done in a few hours. So let me show you a workflow where you can get realistic results in a few minutes. And the best part is we don't even have to leave Blender. The magic word is photo textures. So instead of building up our materials from the ground up with PBR texture sets, with multiple dirt layers, edgeware and so on, we are simply using a photo of the material we want and wrapping it onto our model. So let me show you what I mean. I have this building here without any material and without any good UVs. So let's select the principled BSDF shader and with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled press Ctrl T. This will add an image texture, mapping and texture coordinate node. Now let's load in our image. I like to get these from textures.com since they have a large variety of photo textures. But you can also simply take your own pictures with your phone. Since we don't have any UVs, Blender does not know how to map this 2D image onto this 3D object. So let's go into edit mode, select everything and press U, Cube Projection. In the UV editor we can now slide our UVs around until we find something that works. You can select individual faces and move them to what you like. Currently this looks quite flat, so we can use the same image and plug it into the roughness input. We can then use a color ramp to really control the image and how rough each part should be. Similar, we can also plug it into the height input of a bump node, which we then plug into the normal input of the principal shader. Adjust the distance value to turn up or down the effect. And that is basically how I did most of my materials in this scene. Now of course you don't always find the perfect texture for what you need, 
sometimes you need it much dirtier or you want to add additional surface details. What you can do is to duplicate your image texture node and load in a different image. Then you can use a mixed color node to multiply it on top of the first one. Now we can easily control how dirty and detailed this surface should be. If you want to have more control over this second image, you can use a UV map node and create a second UV map just for that. With some basic color correction nodes, you can then create most of the materials you ever need. And with that workflow, you can quickly texture your entire scene. A few extra tips. Don't create a new material for every little object in your scene. This will take forever. In my case, I created this one plaster material I used for most of the buildings. Using the random output from the object info node, I quickly got some color variations in. This really leaves you the time to spend on the foreground objects. Also, sometimes using PBR texture sets can be really worth it, especially since they come with dedicated displacement and normal maps. Just add some realism on top by multiplying in some grunge image. So the next step is to light our scene. The nice thing about outside environments is that lighting them can be really easy. We basically just need two things. First, a directional light simulating the sun or moon. For that we simply use a sun lamp. And secondly, an HDRI or something similar that will fill in the shadows. I really like to use HDRIs since you can easily switch between many different looks quickly. I really tend to use low res HDRIs since they keep the scene light and responsive and you can't really see the difference between using a 1K or a 16K HDRI. Of course, the background will get super low res with a low res HDRI, but that doesn't matter because we are going to use an extra background image for that. So on a plane, let's load in an image of a sky onto an emission shader and scale it way up and place it in the back of our scene. I like to do it this way since we really have a lot of control over how our sky looks. You can get image packs with hundreds of different high quality images of skies perfect for this kind of thing. Of course, you can also just use a high res HDRI if that is what you prefer. One of the final steps is to add in trees, plants and other nature assets to make this scene believable. I got these from various places, be it free or paid. I will link them in the video description, but you can also just look around yourself for all kinds of free assets. When it comes to foliage, I'm not really as experienced in it as I would like. In the past, I've mostly stayed away from it and only recently started to use them more in my scenes. So I myself have a lot to learn in that regard. What I can really recommend is Kov's videos where he goes into much more detail. But what I basically did was what he explains in his video and I used this simple GeoNodes setup to scatter my stuff around the scene. Looking back at this scene, I really think the foliage is the main thing that is lacking in my scene. So I'm going to improve my skills over time. But the one thing I really learned was that you can't really have enough foliage around your scene. So my first renders, I knew it looked wrong, but I did not know why. And then when I started to add more and more plants, more and more trees, it really started to look better. But still, it's a good reminder to always try and learn something new with each project you do. You don't learn anything new if you only do the stuff you're already comfortable with. As a last step, you can do some compositing and grading, adding lens distortion, lens dirt, chromatic aberration, glare and other lens effects. But this is a topic for another video. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial breakdown. Keep in mind that this is a learning process. Your first, second or even third environment might not look exactly the way you want. I myself still have a lot of small tweaks I would do on this project maybe even do a full animation if I would have had the time. Just keep in mind that you will get better over time if you practice it often enough. Everyone starts from zero at some point. So with that said, I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.